I asked on my community page what you guys wanted to see, and you said you wanted to see more vectorizing. So I got an email asking for me to vectorize something, and I'm going to show you how we do it. So my friend Courtney sent me this picture. Shout out to Courtney. And I asked her where she got it from, and she said, oh, well, we made it. We're wondering if you had the tech skills to convert it. So here we go. So we're going to open up the image in Illustrator. Then I'm going to double click the hand tool. Now I'm going to resize it. I'm going to click hold shift to maintain the proportions and drag the corners to resize it to fit the artboard I'm working with right now. Then I will double click the hand tool in my tools panel to make it full size. You can tell that it came in as an image because there's no direct lines or any other points in this image. So when I have it selected in your properties panel, you will see this option called image trace. If you don't see your properties panel, you can always reset your workspace by clicking reset essentials and make sure you're on the, re the essentials workspace. You can also go up to windows and make sure properties is selected. So with your image selected, you'll see this image trace option. I want you to select that. As it's pixel clustering, don't forget to subscribe for more graphic design content. So after it's clustered, you can choose the preset that works best by clicking that drop down arrow. It goes to logo automatically because it suspects this is a logo. Another one I like to work with a lot is 16 colors. So what, we'll see which one looks better. Another point is I'm looking at my tools panel. You'll notice not all my tools are showing. So I'm gonna go up here and make sure as advanced is set. Whenever your tools panel goes to basic, it removes some of your tools. So looking at this, it honestly, it went to a vector image pretty well. A lot of the text mean, seems to have maintained its proportions. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and select expand with that 16 color option. Now that it's expanded, um, I have all these clean lines. Nothing on here really looks too dramatic, except maybe some of this lettering. So you see the D there didn't quite come in correctly. So it's positivity with a bunch of different languages. Respect looks okay. I mean, and obviously I don't know some of these languages, so they could be wrong to be honest with you and I wouldn't know, but just kind of visually looking that D right there is the only one that looks like it didn't do the image trace very well. So I'm going to start by clicking ungroup on this image and that will make sure I can isolate these different selections. Okay, once I've ungrouped it and clicked away, I can select that D and move it. So you see once I move it, um, it's leaving a hole right there. So I can either go remove this D, fill in the background, and then insert another D trying to find the text that they used. Or what I'm going to do is just insert a shape in the middle of that letter. So I'm going to put it back and I'm going to try to copy one of the other shapes in here. So I'm looking at this right here. I'm going to copy it, then I'm going to paste it and we're gonna put it right here so it looks like it matches. Then I'm going to hold down Alt, which makes a copy, and then I'm gonna rotate this. So it's flipped this way, and then I'm going to put it right there. Bump it up a little bit. That looks pretty close, I think a little bit more. Okay, that looks like it belongs. So now the problem is, when you vectorize it, you want each of the lines to look like this. And I have this random line in the middle of here. So I can either use the Pathfinder tool or because this is so precise, I'm just going to select both of those by shift clicking and then use my Shape Builder tool to click and draw a line to convert those points. Okay, now I've vectorized that specific letter. When I zoomed in, I also noticed some little imperfections here like this spot right here. So I'm going to change the color to match that. Then I'm again going to shift click both of these little pieces. I'm going to use my shape builder tool to connect that right there. Okay. Now it's not a perfectly straight line anymore now that I did that. So I'm going to use my direct selection tool and I'm going to select that area. You can see it added more anchor points when I did that. So I'm going to go in my tools panel to the smooth tool, which is right underneath in line with that shaper tool and then just kind of drag along this to smooth out that line. And that looks pretty decent. So I'm just gonna go through here and look anywhere that I see these little imperfections, I'm going to correct them. Now there's some discoloration right here. So I'm gonna zoom into that, fix that coloring. I see it here and here. So I'm going to make it this color. Again, use that shape builder tool to correct it. And there's a lot of imperfections that I got when I did this. 
A lot of times um, when you have a simpler design, you won't have this many imperfections, but this was pretty intricate. So I got a lot of this. And honestly, now that I'm looking at it, I don't know if they did that light blue color on purpose. So I am going to reach out and ask her if that's something they actually wanted in there. I'm seeing it in a lot of places now that I look a little bit more closely. So I'm just going to make sure that the gray is lined up. There's no obvious imperfections. So once you have your image how you would like it, one thing I like to do is make sure my artboard is the same size as the image. So I'm just going to click my artboard tool in the tools panel and then drag in those edges to make sure that it is the same size as my design ended up being. The cool thing about vectorizing something is it doesn't quite really matter what size you create this to be um, it, because vectorizing converts everything to points and lines with mathematical equations. So you will be able to use this no matter the size that you actually make your artboard. It doesn't quite matter. So the, now once you have it completed, the most important thing you do is how you save it. So once you are finished, you can do save as. You do not want to click convert. You want to click save as. And then you have three options for saving to get a vector file type. You have AI, EPS, and SVG. Any of those three options are industry standard, so you can choose them save it to your computer wherever you want it and then you can go forward it and you have your vectorized image that is ready for print for more videos on vectorization subscribe